Uh, France's greenhouse gas emissions are down again. In 2022, they were uh, lower by 2.5% uh, compared uh, with the previous year. Well, the country pledged that by uh, 2013, it was, 2030, I should say, it would cut down emissions by 40% compared with uh, 1990. I'm joined uh, to talk more about this in the studio with uh, Shirley Sipborn. Uh, Shirley, this seems like good news. Uh, why do we need to kind of take it with a pinch of salt or be cautious when it comes to this news? Because, as some experts have been saying in France, uh, well, the weather has been ex particularly mild this year. That's uh, one thing. And since it was so mild, well, people here did not use their heating as much. They uh, were also consuming less because there were energy hikes. So we can see these images. This is back from uh, the beginning of autumn. Uh, and people are clearly, the, the temperatures are higher than expected. Mm -hmm. And also there was uh, an increase in the prices of energy. So people have been watching out for that. And energy prices, they also led companies to cut down on their work, sometimes uh, close down. And uh, we will see some images because uh, even, you know, the, the baguette has become, well, no, that, that's not the figure, but uh, like, for example, bread makers, uh, they uh, have uh, had to stop working, stop their ovens uh, because, well, the, it was so expensive. They, they have to, they had to uh, wait for specific hours to pay less. And some companies, of course, shut down specifically uh, during some days, a major French company. So that has also uh, led to, uh, well, a lowering of emissions. Uh, and you have talked, uh, there's also the European issue. There has been a lowering also of emissions throughout the EU. Mm -hmm. And, well, uh, the figure we saw earlier, uh, well, it shows that actually the countries of the European Union, they have managed in recent years uh, to cut down their uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 22 percent. So figures are actually pretty good, even if we sometimes have to put in some moderation, not to be uh, over-enthusiastic sometimes. I mean, there are a number of other figures that we need to take into account, in addition to those that you've just spoken about. What would you say that they were? Well, we can see a graph that explains it. Uh, because we talk about greenhouse gas emissions, that was the figure we talked about earlier. Since 2008, minus 22 percent for European countries. Uh, that's in regards to emissions. Uh, but we have a graph that shows, yes, that emissions have been going down regularly. Uh, but uh, at the same time, well, uh, there is uh, what we call Imports and French, for example, France has imported more and more. So what consumers, their carbon footprint, what consumers are using, well, it's still very high. The carbon footprint of the French population is still pretty stable. Uh, we can see that figure right here. The emissions are going down steadily throughout the years, but imported emissions are going up. Mm. So overall, the carbon footprint it's pretty stable, and that's what needs to be lowered. Uh, globally, it, the thing is a, a worldwide phenomenon, and this needs to be lowered through consumption, et cetera, and various policies. That's what counts the most. I mean, that carbon footprint that you're making reference to, Shirley, can be calculated for almost any kind of territory, country, industry, and also for each and every one of us, if you look at it kind of more in more detail. Yes, it can. And we can cross over to a site because uh, this can be calculated. Uh, there are various in every country. Uh, f in France, we have several of those calculators in the UK as well and across the world. Basically, you, you answer a few questions about your consumption of meat, uh, the cars you drive, um, if you take the plane. And when you put all that into perspective, mm. well, it calculates how much you pollute and your carbon footprint. See, that's an example. They ask you questions like, what is your diet? Do you eat meat uh, every in every meal, every day? No beef, because some uh, meats, of course, are uh, generate more uh, carbon sure. uh, gas than others. This is a, a French example uh, when uh, they carry out this test. And you add all that information in. And basically, you see what kind of attitude you can have in life to and maybe change some of your habits so that your carbon footprint is lower uh, than it is uh, currently. Th this gives you an example of what your carbon footprint is, how much you are contributing to world pollution, and basically gives you a hint of what you can do to improve the situation. That's really good, I'll confess. I didn't know that this uh, personal kind of carbon footprint calculator existed. I think I might do that when I get home, uh, Shirley, just to, to kind of check out, you know, how I can reduce uh, my carbon footprint. Uh, Shirley, thank you anyway for our uh, science segment today. Thank you.